Well, I figured I'd continue this and give a tour of that barn. This is the heifer barn. I said in previous videos, my dad bought this in the mid 60s, 65, 66 or so, somewhere in there. I don't know a whole hell of a lot. All I know is the family name that owned this. I don't know what they did or how long they did it, how long they owned it or anything. Like everybody else at that time, they milked some cows, I imagine. They probably had horses. Everybody had a little bit of everything back in them days. That block building there next to the house is the milk house, I'm assuming. That's what we always called it. And that was just part of the regulations back then. You couldn't have the milk house attached to the barn. I don't know if it had to be this far apart or what. But that's why it's the way it is down home. That's why it is here. I know another farm. It was actually up near where that one equipment auction was here a week and a half ago. Two weeks ago, whenever it was. That the milk house wasn't attached to the barn, but it was a hell of a lot closer. They actually had pipeline installed years ago, but actually came out of the barn wall to a post and went into the milk house. So there is options to it. I guess the main main reason back then was they didn't have it um, attached, probably for disease purposes or whatever. But, but we never milked, well, I can't say we never milked cows here. We milked heifers over here before when we had too many for the other barn in the winter and put it in a milk house and, or milk cans and take it down home, dump it in the tank. Yeah, get that tree cut down, that's all dead. There used to be a silo here. I've never seen the silo. This has always been this way. And you see this actually goes down there probably about eight foot, so I don't know how how tall the silo would have been here. Yeah, it couldn't have been a cistern or anything. It was a silo. But uh, this is where we always came in and out. And when I think of it, while well, I'm right here, I'm going to try to start this. I haven't started it all winter. I imagine the battery's probably going to be dead. Yeah, they didn't even... Completely dead. Doesn't even hit the fuel pump. So I have to bring a battery charger or something over for that. That is a cat. That's all that's left in this barn right now is cats. We've got nine cats in this barn. And we come over every night to feed them. But this is the layout this barn's always been. I don't know why it was laid out exactly like this. Most barns, I don't think this is quite wide enough for three rows. But most barns this wide would have three rows. And you have this row facing like it is. It'd be a row facing this way. And then this row would be turned around, so you'd have two butts together and two heads together, so you're not sh they're not shitting each other's feeds. As far as I know, this is the way it was when my dad bought it. I mean, we've done some concrete work in here over the years. Right now, I got concrete busting out again over there. The, um, back in the 90s, we replaced all these divider pieces. And they run out, don't last like you used to. Used to be, this is cherry two by sixes in top plates, but they would rust out or they'd bust them out at the bottom. So the last ones I was replacing with these four by sixes, because that's the other thing. The, they'd work the cups, and you know, we'd have long bolts running all the way to stretch us, and they'd work the cups and get going back and forth. Where are these? Four by sixes, I can lag screw the cup right to that and ain't wiggling none. But we used to do the same thing here. This is the old bull stanchion here. Heavier pipe, and we used to take heifers out on the rope and the bull out on the rope to let them breed. Till we went artificial. 
This barn's a mess here too, because like I say, when I moved them heifers out, they still had part of a bale of hay in here. And I'm going upstairs here and I'm a little bit leery. There's coon or something in here because they just tore the hell out of all this. Um, this side had inch and a quarter pipe framing and box tubing up here. My dad bought these at an auction somewhere back in the 70s. And I, I don't remember him putting them in, but I remember it being done back in the 70s. I was too little to remember any of that stuff. But um, I believe there's 12 stalls on each side. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, 12 on each side. So we had 24 in here, and we could tie one in the corner back there. And we tie some along the edge back there. So we'd have roughly 30 in this barn too. But like I say, this is basically only used in the winter time. The rest of the time they were out on pasture. The little pasture was out there, and like I say, start feeding year round. This barn was nice. The nice thing about this barn is when I went to round bales, I can open up both these doors and I can actually, what we do is bring a bale in, somebody would roll it down and we move them around. We could get six bales of hay in here. So basically we're only putting hay in the barn once a week. And then, uh, so this worked pretty good. It's pretty well open. You can unwrap a bale. You can have one open here and feed these here, one down there and feed down that way. But again, it's like the other barn. This was cleaned with fork and wheelbarrow. You know, probably can't see it here now. Used to have that galvanized grain cart there before it all rusted out. But that's what we used to. Still had to feed in the bags, and we'd stack it up along here and dump it in that cart and wheel it around to grain them. Heifers never got much silage. There was a couple years we fed off and on. That's what this trailer's out here for. Last time I had enough silage to feed them, I'd bring it over here on that trailer and put it in the wheelbarrow and bring it in and feed them. But they mainly just got hay and grain in here. So, I ain't all that much exciting in this barn. In mean, some of my previous videos, I've shown this. I ain't been out back here since last fall, so I don't know what's... I know we got deer aerating my manure pile. I've seen four of them on here the other night running around. That's what they're doing. That's all pocked up because of the deer. Well, maybe I'll take a walk up there. Maybe I'll find a deer dead up here. I've had a heifer get out before and get up in here and was stuck and couldn't get out. So I might not be surprised if I find a deer up here. I only got a little bit of a pile of fertilizer here. No, I don't see none. I'll tell you any of this corn, if I can get corn in up home here, I don't have to buy much fertilizer for it this year. Start hauling this out. If I had weather here last week or so, I probably could haul some. But again, I don't want to haul it on ground. That if I'm not going to get the corn in. Because it ain't going to do no good. If anything, I'll haul it out on some hay fields. It's getting kind of late to be doing that right now, too. But I don't want to run up the hay fields, and it'd be better off if I could take like the first cutting off and then put a lighter coat of that on. But again, I'd rather have it for the corn. And I got, oh, I think about 10 acres right across the road here. I could be spreading it on. But it might not meet, need much manure either. Because there's that ground I had sorghum sedan grass on two years ago that I never got cut off. So all that's on the ground rotting. And got a regrowth of some sort of grass, volunteer grass, some sort. And 
that'd be a good boost for the corn. So that's a problem. The ground I need the manure on is four or five miles away. And we're talking an hour round trip and I could would need 50, 60 loads of manure down here minimum. I'm not running manure that far. You know, I am going to see if I can get this uh, chute open so I can set the ladder up. Like I say, I'm a little leery about going up in there because I don't know if I make coon or anything are up there. What? I want simple little nail or something sticking out. You know, let's see here. Yeah, I was kind of expecting that, but I was hoping it wouldn't. Bunch of dead, dusty shit. See what's tore up up here. It'll be a bumpy ride to get up here for you guys. That's where all that shit's come from. Somebody's dragging it down. Not they were dragging twine up. Yeah, we used to fill this clear up to the peak. Both sides. So I don't know how much hay this bar would hold, but it was feed the heifers over the winter. Plenty enough. And they say that was until we went to the round baler. And in the last... See, that's what's nice about my baler. The size of it. Them bales are a little bit... Well, can be manhandled somewhat. And I would stick two or three in here. And I'd roll them all the way, get them stacked up in here. I could put a layer of bales. I think it was 22 or 24 bales I could hold in here. And I would do that again in case we get weather where I can't get out to the hay tarp or got two foot of snow to dig out of somewhere or something happens. They have hay in the barn. And I got more hay left in here than I thought. Two round bales. <laughs> and it's part of a one. So and that's what all this twine's from when I was feeding the hay out of here. And I was just throwing it up in there, but like I say, there's coon in here somewhere. I know it because the way they're carrying into the cat food down there. Something something more than the cats are eating, I think. Ah, oh, damn, I do have some of them. Son of a bitch. 
When I went to fix some barn doors on the new barn there a couple weeks ago, I ended up buying more of them. I knew I had some more around here. I don't remember them being up in this barn though. I thought they were in them cupboards and cabinets I have down home. There's some I could take to a sale. There's a... Oh, well, maybe it ain't what I thought it was. One little cultivator. I think it was like on an old... No, no, that's a hand one. We had one used to go on a, either Sears or Montgomery Ward two-wheeled tractor thing. Cart tractor, whatever you want to call them. Oh, well, like I said, them hangers I'll need again sometime. I think I might actually even need them on this. I think, I think this door track out here is coming apart somewhere. Let's check into that. Chris, I even remember there's a lawnmower up here. Floor's bad in there. We got the old granary. We never used it as a granary. Got a bunch of windows there my dad bought off of somebody. We never used them. Old syrup pans in there from the original evaporator. This whole thing is sketchy on this corner. I don't know what the hell to do about it. And this is the old square baler. Might as well tell that story while I'm here now. So when I get through the mother parts, it's a New Holland 311. My dad bought this baler brand new in 1984. Traded in a New Holland 270 baler on it. Uh, it came with a thrower and stuff. It's probably been 10 years since I've used that. I've debated about taking it and selling it. I could sell it tomorrow. I know somebody's looking for a baler, but I won't sell it to them. But then again, if I still stay making hay, it always gives me the option to square bale hay to sell for eight to ten dollars a bale or whatever people get nowadays. And this is the only hay wagon I have left. Peckway. It's only an eight by sixteen. And I don't plan on selling this one. I wish it was an 8x18, but the one I just took to the auction last year was a 9x18, and that's just too wide. It would fit in here, but it's just too much for anything. Here's all a bunch of extra spare parts, fittings, and stuff from when I bought the pipeline. Came out of a 36 stall barn. So I got a bunch of elbows and clamps and shit like that left. Oddball pieces of pipe. Up there's the rest of the pipeline I never needed. So, and this is the old hay elevator. This is how we used to fill the hay malls. This barn wasn't too bad. We could set up bales of hay right here so I'm set it on to wherever the wagon would push in at here and just push up to it down home would be picking this thing up onto the end gate of the wagon after every load so kind of but it would put hay clear up there so most way up there we'd go up that beam and there are usually two or three guys up there getting it up to the peak working its way up right there I knew this was still up here. Where the hell the bolt's at? This here, this bar, that pipe, from my understanding, my uncle worked for the pen dot, and that came off of a bridge project or something. It was a scrap piece, something they didn't need or whatever. But that's how we used to push hay wagons up in the barn. We'd hook on most running gear. There is a tab on the axle hitch hole. You know, one more, much bigger than a hitch pin. But we'd put that pin in there and then push it, put the one on the tractor and then push the wagon up in the barn. So. Yeah, that ripped 
out. I didn't realize the latch at the bottom ripped out there. It's out of place over there. I'm gonna have to go brace that on the outside. That's still there. I don't know what the hell happened there. I'm gonna have to brace some doors up. So what are you following me for, cat? Nobody wants you around. But that's about as exciting as it gets for this barn. Yeah, like I say that baler there's probably been, like I say, did I say it, ten years at least since I've used it. That was kind of the plan this year, but since as of this moment, I don't have the ground. There was about eight, nine acres I was going to seed down. I figured, well, if I put oats in, because the feed mill wants oats, that uh, if I could get somebody to combine them, then I'd bale up the straw. And I know I could sell the straw to people at the fairs. Everybody's looking for square bales to bed cattle at the fair with. So I could... Should be should have been able to make some pretty good money on oats maybe this year. But as of right now, I only got about a two acre piece I want to see down. And like I say I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rush to it. If I can get some grass seed to spin on it just to get something to grow on it, fine. That was the other thing. If I put the oats in and can't get nobody to combine it, I can always bale it off and wrap it and sell sell it for baleage. And get some decent money for it. But like I said, until my relative makes up his mind, if he's going to be in, if he wants to be a bigger ass than I am, well, so be it. See, I actually expected to see him out this weekend and maybe come over and say something, but they ain't come up. He's in, he lives in Pittsburgh. So. But. And I guess, like I say, there ain't nothing left to talk about up here, I guess. Unless somebody wants a knotter cover, that red thing right there, that's the knotter shield for a 270 baler. Anybody wants that. Uh, I don't even know if anybody's got a 270 baler anymore. I mean, we're talking 19... My dad bought that baler in the early 60s at least, when it had a slide on it. And then it was about 71 or 72, that's when he went to the thrower and got the bale wagons. Because he had my mom running the tractor, baling, and he was on the wagon stacking, and I forget which field or where they were at, but something happened and she couldn't stop the tractor, it didn't want to stop, or he went for a little bit of a ride, and you know, that's where he said the hell of that. And we you know, went to the thrower and wagons, they don't have to worry about somebody else. So, you know, I'm going to climb down and see, see what else is left down there. You know, maybe I'm wrong about the coon up there. Like I say, I got a bucket of twine there from when I was done feeding. I thought something was dragging it up. Now I just wonder if it's the cats up there playing with it on there and dragging it down. That makes a little more sense. I don't see where coon would care about baler twine. But, but, yeah, again, like I said, this barn's the same thing. Stances were getting bad. You see that one there is tied up by twine because the hanger was shot on it. Most of them you had to tie shut because the latches don't latch like they're supposed to. The holes are all wallowed out. Uh, even these uprights, a couple of these I've had to refix, but these getting weak. Well, like I say for a while there, I had them running a little bit loose in here, and like I said, it just made sense to take them down home, put them in that barn. A lot easier to take care of them down there and fight all this stuff. But like I, said, I don't know what else. Ain't that really that much more about this barn, I guess. This one was not that spectacular. Don't know all the much of that the history of it. Well, I guess I better get up here. Should have been pipes on this door anyhow. 
the bottom's latched. you want to use. Need to get over here and clean the rest of this shit up off there. Get the vines off there. Yeah, I think it's that one just to the right of that roller up there split out of the track or something. And that's gonna be fun. You gotta have to have somebody push that up. Somebody, and it's not gonna be me to climb up there, tap that end in. But like I said, I don't need to get in and out of there other than to get the baler out if I ever decide to. What the hell is that? Oh, now I remember my brother. He works at a shop downtown and they had some machine setting in that tank and they no longer needed it or something. But anyway, they were gonna just junk that. So he brought it home. I don't know what we're gonna do with it, but nothing else. I can take it down to the consignment auction and get a hundred bucks for it. Worst comes to worst. But I guess, you know, the other thing exciting over to this place is them of the corn cribs. I'm going to say they're 1,200 bushel. It might only be 1,000 bushel. We had like 165, 180 bushel wagons. And I know you could fill that in about nine loads. Because the ear corn, you're never getting them wagons clear filled up to every corner in it. That's where I say, if I can get corn planted and get another corn picker. So that's going to be the name of the game this year, is adding value. Since everything sounds like it's going to be next to nothing. I would consider soybeans, but again, I don't know how or who I'm going to get to combine them. So, i got to do something that... I know I'd be able to do at some point. And that's what I say, if I can fill these two cribs, that granary there, it's, I think that's only a thousand bushel. We used to put oats in there. But, uh, I know, had somebody asking me if I knew anybody had ear corn last year. All much were looking for ear corn. So again, if I got ear corn, nobody else does. If somebody wants it bad enough, they'll pay the price that I want. Yeah, if I want to look in here, I haven't been in this thing in uh, how long. Ooh, kind of nasty in there. That's why I quit growing oats, too. I mean, I'd, I'm not exactly sure what's in the bottom of this. It's supposed to be like a wagon mill. I don't know if it's wood and metal or what. But there's like a spoke system across the bottom and it's just sheet metal laid on top of it. And that was starting to go to hell. But like I say, it's gone, gotten to the point of not going to be able to put uh, oats in it. So that's why I quit growing oats. Oh, oh, oh ball here. Why do I plant the corn I want to plant? I'm not going to fit enough in here, but at least I got that sheller that I can always shell it and take it in. And the other thing is, if I just want to say the hell with it, get rid of all the cattle I got left, that building out back I stack manure in, I could stack bales of hay down each wall to block it in, cover and close it in some. Then I would have good undercovered hay that I could sell and then pick the ear corn, just dump it on the floor in there, you know, put some tubes, 
some sewer tile or something down the center for airflow to get through it. And then that would be a lot easier to load up than it's even going to be out of these cribs. Find the right guy who wants to buy a trailer load. I have this thing here. I can load up. Oh, what the hell I get on here? This will hold about 100 bushel. Because that wagon I borrowed when I was shelling corn, that was like a 165 bushel wagon. And I couldn't quite get it all on this wagon trailer. Let me see if the battery's even dead in this. Oh, hi, cutie. What are you doing in there? Yeah, good. Battery's got it. Yeah, let me put you down for a second so I can dig this out. I'm gonna have to go get some big packs put in here or something because this little bastard already ruined my strap. Somebody's ass is gonna get kicked. As long as they ain't chewing wires, I guess, but I didn't see no little ones come flying out of there. Oh well. Well, I guess I've rambled on long enough. Like I say, that's just backstory of this barn, a little bit of the history of it that amount I know of. So I guess I'm gonna end it here. So thanks for watching. We'll catch up with you later.